What happened to the Man of Steel? For years, he was considered a film icon, setting the stage for the likes of Tim Burton's Batman, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we know it. Superman was always a character that modern audiences knew about and someone older generations loved dearly thanks to Christopher Reeve's portrayal as the Man of Tomorrow. But after the massive failure that was Superman IV The Quest for Peace, the character was shelved for 19 years. But thanks to the success of Fox's X-Men and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films, Warner Brothers felt it was time to bring back their heroes to the silver screen. Christopher Nolan reintroduced the world to Batman in 2005 in a unique and interesting way, delivering the first part of what many consider to be one of the greatest film trilogies of all time with Batman Begins. And in 2006, it was Superman's turn. Unfortunately, many found the film to be too similar to the Superman films of the past, and the mixed reception of the first Superman film in nearly two decades wasn't enough to warrant a sequel. So Superman was set aside while Batman took center stage as DC's true box office darling. But as the Dark Knight trilogy came to a close and the Marvel Cinematic Universe now in full swing, Warner Brothers decided to dust off Superman yet again bringing on Zack Snyder, director of Smash Hit 300, to direct the film, and even convincing Christopher Nolan to stick around as producer. Casting the then-unknown Henry Cavill to step into the boots of Superman was a risk, as he didn't resemble the iconic Christopher Reeve, but risks were what they needed to take. The safe approach that they took with the look of Superman Returns was not a mistake they intended to make again. So with such a popular up-and-coming director set to make Superman his own, a producer who created the legendary Dark Knight trilogy, and an actor who looked like he walked off of a comic book panel, the movie could not fail, right? Well, critics and Superman purists alike were very unhappy with this portrayal of Superman, insisting he wasn't meant to be dark like Batman. Superman was meant to be a beacon of hope, the light of the DC Universe, not a murderer. This was not the Iron Man that DC wanted to kick off their cinematic universe, but despite all the backlash, the film became a box office success, grossing over $668 million with a production budget of $225 million. As someone who saw Man of Steel on opening night and many, many times since, I don't understand how fans of the character weren't in love with this version of Superman. Calling Henry's portrayal dark and emotionless, calling the direction of Zack Snyder flat and uninspired, making the claim that the script penned by David S. Goyer was bloated and uninteresting. If you're one of these people, I respect your opinion, but I believe most of the people who think this have only seen the film once or twice and then just hopped on the anti-Man of Steel bandwagon and never looked back. What I don't think these people understand is this film is about Clark's journey and becoming Superman. In my opinion, the screenplay is very, very good. The tone and themes of the film are set during the Shakespearean-inspired sequence on Krypton. We see the fall of an entire race too blind to see the faults in their own society, and the hope that they will live on through Kal-El is tragically beautiful. The pride of Zod is on full display as every fiber of his being is set on saving the Kryptonians. After all, it's his entire goal. He was bred with the purpose to protect Krypton at all costs. So with that in mind, his character becomes even more tragic and the performance given by Michael Shannon is very powerful. He delivers Zod's lines with a laser-focused purpose and shows us who Zod is and why we should care about him. You won't kill us yourself! You wouldn't sully your hands, but you'll damn us to a black hole for eternity! jor was right. You're a pack of fools. Every last one of you. Not only are the themes of hope and sacrifice established early on during this opening sequence, but what Zack Snyder is able to accomplish with Krypton is stunning. The amount of detail that went into the design of the world is wholly unique, and the visual storytelling done by Snyder and cinematographer Amir Mokri is amazing. The themes of hope and sacrifice are the foundations that the film is built on, and they are woven spectacularly throughout the film. It begins with the sacrifice of Jor-El and Lara by staying on Krypton, embracing the fate of the fools who doom their planet. But this is juxtaposed spectacularly by the hope that their son Kal-El will continue on and be the living embodiment of everything that is great about Krypton. After arriving on Earth, hope 
and sacrifice are the key components when telling Clark Kent's backstory. This is personified by the relationship between Clark and his adoptive father, Jonathan Kent. Many people who love this movie have issues with how Jonathan Kent was portrayed in Man of Steel, and while I understand those frustrations, you have to realize this is not the all-knowing, perfect, endlessly humble Jonathan Kent that we grew up with. This version is more relatable than any other version of the character that I can think of. He's just a father who wants the best for his son. Knowing how the world will react to the existence of Superman and wanting Clark to be ready for those consequences of revealing himself is at the forefront of Jonathan's mind. And it turns out, he was right. While the majority of people put their hopes and their faith in Superman, there are those who feared him and who would go to great lengths to eliminate the Man of Steel. But I'm not defending Batman versus Superman, and I don't think I ever will. The point here is that Jonathan Kent was just a loving father who wanted his son to live a normal life. He didn't know the answer to the question, what do I do if a school bus of kids are drowning? So he allowed Clark to make the decision when he was ready, and Clark chose to save everyone. You were sent here for a reason. All these changes that you're going through one day, one day you're going to think of them as a blessing, and when that day comes, you're going to have to make a choice. A choice of whether to stand proud in front of the human race or not. Can I just keep pretending I'm your son? You are my son. So the sacrifice Jonathan Kent makes to show Clark that the human race is not beyond redemption is a very important scene, and it serves to remind us of the themes of sacrifice and hope. The idea that this version of Superman is not built with that same foundation of hope that he is in the comic books is just objectively wrong. But here's the thing, he's not infallible. He can make mistakes, and that's perfectly fine. He isn't an omniscient being who always knows what the right thing to do is, and throughout the film we get to see a young Clark Kent who wants nothing more than to protect people, even when the risk of revealing himself is great. After his father's death, we get to see Clark mature from a man who is lost in the world, who is unsure of himself and where his place is, to a man that becomes the beacon of hope that Jonathan and Jor-El always knew he could be. All of this culminates in one of the most breathtaking sequences in the history of cinema, at least in my opinion. Superman's first flight. Snyder is at the top of his game here. The way that he depicts the immense power of Superman while also giving us a glimpse of the weight put on the shoulders of someone who is given such an important task is utterly jaw-dropping. With the words of Jor-El in the back of his mind, Clark makes his decision to become Superman, the embodiment of hope that the world so desperately needs. After the return of Zod and his followers, we get into the territory where people who don't like the film really start speaking up, and I'd like to get this out of the way as soon as possible. The idea that Superman doesn't save people is just ridiculous. He surrenders himself to Zod so no harm will come to the people of Earth. And after learning Zod's plan, Superman makes the decision to let Krypton die so humanity can be saved, making a sacrifice for the hope of the future. So let me say it again. Superman saves the entire human race in this movie. He flies across the planet to stop the world engine and then flies back to face Zod, whose entire goal is to end all life on Earth so Krypton could be reborn. One question you'll hear a lot of people bring up when discussing this film is, why didn't Superman do more to prevent the destruction of Smallville and Metropolis? Why didn't he do more to save innocent bystanders? Well, here's the thing. Superman was doing everything in his power to stop these alien invaders, and any time a chance came about to save just one or two people, he took that opportunity. But this isn't the Superman that's in his prime that we see in the comic books. The movie tells us this multiple times, and people still ignore it. You are weak, son of hell. Unsure of yourself. The fact that you possess a sense of morality, and we do not, gives us an evolutionary advantage. Clark was fighting off the Sword of Rao followers, soldiers who were literally bred to be warriors, given DNA to make them faster and stronger than any other Kryptonian, trained for years to become living weapons, and you're complaining because Superman wasn't able to casually force Zod to fight him in space. I was bred to be a warrior, Cal. Trained my entire life to master my senses. Where did you train? On a farm?
I guess what most people overlook or just forget is that Superman was getting his ass kicked for most of this fight. And the second he was given the opportunity to end Zod's madness, saving the entire human race, he took that opportunity despite how much it hurt him to do it. Superman openly cries in agony after he was forced to end Zod's life. So those people who think this film is not visually stunning, who think the script is hot garbage, who think Superman is bland and not inspiring, I say, Nope, you are nitpicking and biased. I win, bye bye.